Hey, 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 welcome back. This is Emi Chicken from Team Pandori, and today we have another Fanless PC by Meal. This is the PCG 35 GLK. Let's open her up. Today I will promise not to speak about my stick. I'll be back after I have crushed Beverly with my dong. Alrighty. It's terrible time! With a very skimpy manual. Where you got it determines language. How to update SSD, check your BIOS. My initial reaction was... Look at this. That looks nice. Much larger than the last mini PCs we've had, this one looks to be designed by a car junkie. A greaser. Night fever. There's one button on the front, four USB 3s, headphone jack, and a micro SD slot. A three monitor setup is supported, one VGA with two HDMI ports. There's a one gigabit LAN Ethernet port, DC in, USB C, and that lock thing that I don't think anyone uses. Oh, and you can use this antenna like a windscreen wiper. Squeak, squeak. Clean them windows. On the bottom, some private information. Packaging is bare bones. Just the essentials in here. We have the power adapter. It's an adjustable one. 12 volt, 2 amp. Mine came with both the European and American style plugs. Got four screws here. And uh, I don't know what that is. Let's check the size. We're gonna bring out a banana. Everyone likes bananas, except for the missus, my daughter. Um, this thing's four times as large as the Millie Quieter 2Q we had on earlier. To the specs! It's a J4215, four core, four threads, eight gigabit of DDR4 single, bleh, and a vast range of connectivity options. Much like any other mini PC, we could just pop it next to a monitor. And we are go. Sorry about that, bit of a fib. We need power and also a keyboard. I've got one of these with a wireless dongle. Connected to the monitor via HDMI, we can turn her on. We're greeted to a nice fresh install of Windows with the usual box standard questions. Where you live, blood type, stool sample. This will take a few minutes, so we'll just go for a walk. Maybe get stung by a mosquito or two, and we should be done. Now we can start jiving in Windows. We have a full version of Windows 10 Pro with 91.6 gigabytes free. J4215, 8 gig RAM, as per written in the specs. Hooks up to the Wi-Fi network very easily with a strong connection. No bad signal here with an aerial of that size. We can update Windows, more entry holes for the NSA and Microsoft, and you'll lose more than 11 gigabytes of space. Zero threats on Malwarebytes. Here's HW info. We can also see it stays very cool at idle. 46 degrees Celsius. Some benchmarks. Unfortunately, Shizuku says no. It can't see the drive. The Windows experience is rather good, quite snappy. Look, I found stickers for one cent with free shipping. You could use this for schoolwork, spreadsheets in Excel. Everything is awesome. Light image editing is also possible. Video editing, you can forget. Need a bit more power for that. Let's play a game. In Google Earth, we're gonna go to Street View. And the question, what country are we in? If you have an answer, comment down below. Maybe you know whose dog this is. Hello, dog. 4K video, YouTube.
or if you prefer some Netflix and chill and some crisps crisps and Netflix we can use Bluetooth controllers with this box and it's time to get steamy steamy like other mini PCs with the same chipset it handles 2D games such as Castle Crashers fairly well Streets of Rage 4 at 1080p Default option settings we get from 30 to 35 FPS. Moving on to some AAA games like The Fall Guys. It's fairly obvious to see that the bottleneck of this box is the GPU. And even shifting down to 720p, gameplay is still sluggish. See us go. We have from around 20 to 40 FPS. While it's not the best for demanding titles, the strength of this chipset is emulation gaming. <laughs> we can install Batocera to this SSD, and then this system would be an emulation powerhouse. If you're too lazy to install Batocera yourself, you could get these pre-installed hard disk drives off AliExpress. They range from 500 gigabytes all the way to two terabyte drives. We may have one of these here, and we might just screw it in. I'm back. Do you have a cigar? Attach both SATA and power cables. Now we have a nice, neat emulation powerhouse. The BIOS of the system is fairly comprehensive. And to get Batocera started, we need to go to the boot menu and select boot menu 1 to Batacera or just hit the boot override. Batacera is a front-end, much like RetroPie and it can run many systems. So we've got like Amiga, ScumVM, DOS, NES, SNES, N64, GameCube, PlayStation, PSP, etc. We have exactly the same performance as the Melee Quieter 2Q that we had on the channel earlier. It's a system that's great for MAME and can even run the most demanding PSP titles. We can even go as far as GameCube. Mario Kart Double Dash will run at 100% with a few dips every now and then. Whereas F-Zero GX is noticeably slow. What's great to see is that this box stays extremely cool. Straight after the heavy workload, we're still at 51 degrees Celsius. Amazing. Remember this has no fan, it's completely silent. In today's video, as a little bonus, we're going to use an external graphics board. I got this external GPU mount from AliExpress around $50. I got the one with the 50 centimeter cabler. Let's put it together. Bit like Lego except for no instructions. This is my main graphics board, the GeForce 1060. Screw it in, secure it tight. We need one power connector. This goes from here down to the board underneath it. And now to power it. Any power supply from a PC will do, or uh, one of them Dell laptop ones. I stole this from my daughter's computer, hope she didn't notice. But I'm a bit of a cheapskate. Eh, what you gonna do? We connect the graphics board to the mini PC using this slot here. It's the free M2 slot which is inside the PC. The monitor connects to the graphics board via HDMI. Oh, and we need this plugged in too. 4-pin CPU plug. It's turbo time. So this is now very similar to a regular PC. Just turn it on and everything just works. Real easy. Except you've got a big mess. Look at all, look at this. It's like making a time machine. Once we've booted to Windows, we install the Nvidia drivers and check out these benchmarks. CSGO 
720p, we've got 60 to 100 FPS. And at 1080p, high quality settings, we're looking at anywhere from 40 to around 70 FPS. Ten eighty P flawless. Pinball FX three. This struggles with the onboard GPU, but now with the external ten sixty, runs like wine. And even in King of Fighters 13, it's extremely smooth. Even Skyrim Special Edition runs rather well. How about we push this now to the limit with Techno Parrot? Yarr. With this piece of software, we can emulate even the newer arcade games. Yarr. First up, Outrun 2, SP, SDX. We're running this at 720p widescreen. Sega Rally 3 says no. The original hardware for this was a 3.4 dual core system. So we'll need a faster CPU for a smoother ride. What is surprising is how well Tekken 7 ran. It's amazing how this stays cool, looks awesome, and is completely silent. And connectivity options are there if the user wants to tailor the computer to their needs. On the flip side, it's a little bit bulky and slightly more expensive than the competition. It needs to be said that this box is the bigger, badder twin of the Meal Quieter 2Q. If you require elegance, go for the latter. If you want better cooling, a 2.5 inch hard drive inside, Behave. macho looks, and a Wi-Fi windscreen wiper, this mini PC can be a nice addition to your arsenal. Anyway, this has been Emi Chicken of Team Pandory, and I'll catch you on the next video. Ta-ra!